All right, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we are going to talk about Terrence Bud Crawford saying he is going to give Errol Spence Jr. what he wants in this fight. Something that is hard for me to believe, but at the same time, I actually believe it. Let's talk about that in this video. Right. Welcome back to the channel. It's your boy Fanon. We are sitting in the middle of this boxing desert. No big fights that really a lot of people are interested in coming up. Everybody pretty much just waiting around to see if we're going to get the mega fight that we've been talking about for years. The Errol Spence Jr. and Terrence Crawford fight. Um, however, some information has come out or a quote attributed to uh, Terrence Crawford has come out about what he is going to actually do in the fight if and when the contracts are signed. And that is take it straight to Errol Spence Jr., stand in front of him and trade with him. Um, something that are not a lot of people think that Terrence Crawford will do. But before I get into that, let me welcome you back to the channel. If you are new to the channel, please accept my invitation to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon so you can be notified of when we release more videos, which we do on a daily basis and in the live stream format and in the video format. Also, if you are a longtime subscriber to the channel, support of the channel, thank you so much for your support. Chopping it up with you guys about boxing, reading the comments in the comment section really is a highlight to my day. Thank you guys so much for continuing to support the channel. All right, so let's get into this. Biggest fight, as we know, in boxing right now, probably the most important fight, the most, most, impact, uh, most impactful fight that you can have right now in the sport. Uh, Errol Spence Jr., who's the WBA, WBC, and the IBF uh, welterweight champion, and Terrence Crawford, who's the WBO champion, former undisputed champion at 140, former 135 pound champion, and according to many people, uh, the number one pound for pound fighter in the world, looking to fight each other. A lot of talk about what's going on, what's not going on in the contract as far as getting the contract signed. The longer it goes, the more quiet people are, the more I'm like, oh, man, just announce this fight, man. <laughs> or announce who you're going to fight next so that we can all just get past it and move on and talk about that, right? Um, however, uh, some quotes have been attributed to Terrence Crawford where Terrence Crawford says, that he is going, how talks about how he is going to actually fight Errol Spence Jr. in the ring. And many people don't believe it. He says that he is going to stand in front of Errol Spence Jr. He is not going to back down from Errol Spence Jr. He's going to fight Errol Spence. Now, if you're not familiar with Errol Spence's style, that is what Errol Spence Jr. likes to do. That is what Errol Spence Jr. has been very efficient at in breaking down guys and stopping guys is by fighting his way on the inside going at a guy's body, wearing that guy down over the course of the fight and getting him out of there by either breaking his bone, bre breaking an eye socket or or uh, stopping him. Right now, there have been fights, on the other hand, where that Errol Spence Jr. has not done that. The Mikey Garcia fight, the and the uh, Danny Garcia fight are the ones that probably stand out the stand out the most. Uh, but pretty much in all the other fighters the fights, that's what he went to do. He tried to get on the inside, come at the guy, and he won all of his fights like that. Even if he didn't stop the guy, he put a lot of damage on him. Mikey Garcia probably being the best example, somebody that got a ton of damage inflicted on them, even though he didn't get stopped, and probably. It might have added a couple more fights to his career if he had stopped that fight, because that was an unnecessary amount of punishment for him to be taken for pretty much the last four rounds of continually getting punched. However, Terrence Crawford said that he ain't worried. He's not worried about that, that he is going to fight Errol Spence Jr. on the inside. And in my opinion, there's two ways to look at that. Uh, first, before I look at the two ways, I think Terrence Crawford would actually do that. My view of Terrence Crawford as a fighter is a little bit different than what I think other people see him as. I think people that talk about him as somebody that fights from the outside and is and is going to be, you know, this out boxer against Ter against Errol using a jab, right? Doing that traditional kind of out, out boxing style. 
That's really not Terrence Crawford's style. Terrence Crawford is somebody that will engage with you. He will fight on the back foot. He will fight on the back foot in spurts. But whenever he has an opportunity to attack somebody and to go and to fight them at mid range or not as much in close, uh, because primarily I say him not as much in close because a lot of guys don't get past mid range for it to get inside, right? But because he often catches guys at mid range, but at mid range. That dude is somebody that is much more a counter punching a boxer puncher than he is just a purely a pure boxer and most definitely will get in exchanges with people that test him. And that's something that Errol Spence Jr. has said in the past. Like, look, I know what Bud is going to do. Bud is going to fight. That's not going to be a doubt. He's not going to be out there fighting from the outside and doing all that stuff. Bud is not going to be able to resist. But fight. When I go with him, he's going to come back. And that's exactly how Bud fights. So the two ways that you could look at that is one, that that could be an advantage for Terrence Crawford in that Terrence Crawford could take advantage of some of the some of the holes that Errol Spence Jr. showed in his last fight against your Danies Ugas, specifically in that in that I do believe it was in the was it in the sixth round where uh, your Danies Ugas landed some really nice uh, left hooks on 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 Errol Spence Jr. on the inside. He wound up knocking the mouthpiece out of Errol Spence and he had, you know, had some good success, you know, in the, in that particular space at that time, right? However, you know, that was kind of like a um, oasis, in the, uh, you know, a mirage in the desert, right? Because it looked like that, like he was having success. That little bit of success that he had came to a quick end, a, uh, end real quick because he really couldn't capitalize on it. And Arrow was right back in his chest, wearing him down, wearing him down, and eventually breaking him down and stopping him. Right. So or, or having the ref having the refs and the doctors call it off, which I think is a little bit worse. Right. Or, you know, so but for Terrence Crawford, who may consider himself to be a better fighter on the inside than your Danny's Ukas. And I don't necessarily know if he is in that particular game. Ter- Errol Spen- I mean, uh, your Danny Zugas really does like to fight on the inside and is somebody that fights on the inside on a very, very consistent basis. Right. But Ter- uh, but Terrence Crawford was able to take advantage of that against Sean Porter. And when he started fighting Sean Porter on the inside, those uppercuts of the body really started changing the fight for him against uh, Sean Porter. And Sean Porter is somebody that likes to fight up close, likes to get on the inside with people. But he, as he was trying to come in, uh, Terrence Crawford caught him with a bunch of really nice stuff and was able to stop him as a result of that. Now, I'm not the biggest fan of the stoppage, but, you know, it is what it is. He dropped him two times. I think in the um, was it the 10th round, dropped him two times and his and his uh, trainer father threw in a towel. So g- going at Errol Spence Jr. may may actually work for him, especially if he can do it in the in, in the beginning of the round uh, of the fight and slow down Terrence Errol and make Errol very cautious about coming in. I do think, however, that he'll also have to deal with the fact that t- that Errol Spence can box a lot better than people give him credit for. Man, that guy is not somebody that is just a one dimensional fighter. He can actually score a lot of punches fighting, it, uh, scoring at mid range and outside with that very, very effective jab that he has. And this would be and it's a southpaw jab. And if Terrence Crawford is fighting in an orthodox stance, the Errol Spence Jr. has a lot of a lot of experience, a lot of success jabbing his way in. He doesn't come in reckless. He doesn't come in out of position or anything like that, trying to get on the inside. Very, very technically sound, uh, you know, for the most part. Now, there again, like with the Yordani Zugas fight, there was times where he didn't look as he didn't look as solid. It looked a little bit off. That could have been the fact that he had one fight in two years. Right. Could that could have to do something to do with the ring rust and a little bit of, you know, anxiousness on his part. And that may or may not be there in the next fight. But anyway, I just think if he does it, if Terrence Crawford does fight him on the inside, that's just no way that that is not going to be exciting fight. There's no way that we will not get fireworks in that fight. If he decides to do that, that that's what you call a classic fight. Will he be able to if he but if he plays like that and he's really not able to capitalize like he thinks he can capitalize and he winds up taking three for one. That's not going to be a good math for him. But anyway, it is what it is. You let me know what you think in the comment section. And with that, I'm out. Peace.